welcome achievers to your easy achievers game podcast for the week of oh my god april 11th I hope everyone's doing well out there we are in a strange time in gaming i feel i can't remember the last time it's been this quiet in terms of hardcore news, we have things to discuss, right? Of course, like always, but there's just not much really to go on, right? There's not really like a big thing to be like, oh my God, this happened. Oh my God, this happened. Oh, you know, so uh, we're, we're discussing, yes, of course, like always, but I don't know. We're, we're really going to be kind of chilling today. We're going to be going through some things that need to be discussed as always, but be prepared for a light news story and, you know, getting very intimate in the industry uh, b- before really expecting something groundbreaking. Eh, we don't really have much today, but I think we're still going to talk about a couple interesting things. Of course, there's a little bit of Dead Space news that came out. Everyone here knows that that is something very close to me. We have a couple things about Stellar Blade. We have Dragon's Dogma 2 sales data. We have... A firm, an entertainment analyst firm, saying they might know a little bit of Final Fantasy Rebirth sales numbers. And we can discuss all these things on this week's episode. So thank you so much for taking your time today. Thank you for donating the time, for sitting here, enjoying. Remember, timestamps below. Description is always below on YouTube and podcast service of your choice. Now, let's get right into this because... I don't really have a primer for you today. We, I've been enjoying wrestling. I we just watched WrestleMania over the weekend. I had a blast. One of my fa- probably my favorite WrestleMania recently, or at least ever. I think I had a I had a blast wearing my Damian Priest T shirt. Of course, he had a very big night at WrestleMania, and then Raw Raw was fine. We all felt like a mellowing. You know, a lot happened in WrestleMania, so they kind of relaxed for Raw. I feel like. And then, of course, as of recording, we have SmackDown tonight. And, and I've gotten really into wrestling. And it's, it does feel like everyone else is a little too. You know, they had their biggest WrestleMania, I believe, ever by every single metric that you could possibly think of. And I don't know. I'm happy. It was kind of like it was, it was kind of the lame thing to like for a while. And then it was kind of cool. And then it was, kind, you know, it was in this weird medium space of like, it's not really talked about that much in social circles because not many people watch it because it's melodramatic. But I feel like we're in a good space right now where it's not very melodramatic. It's not very over the top in all the senses, right? We don't have the boogeyman coming out eating worms and, like, he, you know, he's a demon or something. We don't have things like that. We, You know, it, there's not really shtick that is so out of the realm that it's distracting. It's more believable i would say maybe that's why it's gotten mainstream appeal because i haven't seen people watch this much in in uh since like when i was a kid in like the big cena era so thank you so much for joining me today let's get into the show as i don't want to delay too much you'll notice a cut in today's show because i'm gonna have to take a a quick break and run over and uh, do some things so apologies for that i like doing one video not cuts not to distracting and also i get into a flow i don't know if if anyone out there is like this when you work but when i get in a flow i hate breaking it up because i come back it feels like my brain is reset i don't i don't like that so i do hate cutting the show up it won't of course be noticeable to you because it'll be edited together but i do like pointing it out because it can be distracting I think you, you just see a random cut and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa what, what, what happened there? Well, what was going on? What, did something happen? I wonder what happened when they did that. But it'll only be for a few minutes in in my time. And of course, unnoticeable for you. Not so rapid fire. Senen Osaga Hellblade 2 will run at a 30 frames per second cap on Xbox. And there will also be a no performance mode available. Now, this has gotten some light news as Digital Foundry did some digging and has figured out that the... I haven't digged too much into it because I'm not a big resolution guy, but apparently the resolution had to be kicked back quite a bit so the game can run at the high fidelity that it can. Like, the like since it's working with Unknown Engine 5, the entire... Uh, the the frame rate and the actual resolution was tanked to accommodate for the uh, visual side of things, and that is pretty 
disappointing because I was figuring like, oh, okay. You know, at no point did I think this was 60 frames. So I, I want to make that clear. And if it even was a 60 frame ones, I probably would have played it at 30 frames because it's meant to be like this very cinematic movie like experience. I bring this up when I played Alan Wake 2. I was like, well, this kind of feels like it's meant to be the prettiest thing. And also the director prior for the game to come out was like, hey, you know, we were able to get a performance mode to work. Originally, I wasn't even going to do it, but we, you know, we, we had some people work on it and it was able to do, uh, come out. But, you know, there you go. I want it to be at 30. And he's like, oh, OK, well, if if he wants the experience to be at 30 frames, well, then I want to play it like that. So so I'm going. So I do that for sure. And the same deal was with this. Now, there won't be any selections at all, at least at launch. I assume none will come to it because of the nature of how the game has been made. Uh, but I'm fine with that. I don't really care. I don't think. Uh, but we'll only know when I play the game, of course. If I actually do care. I'm not one of the 30 frames. I, I thought I was. I thought I was like, oh, no. 60 frames no deal but that's not really how it is if the game is very quick you know 30 frames it's gonna gonna be distracting there were some parts of final fantasy 7 rebirth that i actually had to play in the 30 frames mode because the game i don't know if it was a bug that i just had i saw people saying random things on the internet so i couldn't find a cohesive argument or agreement between anyone but the 30 frames in some looked horrible and in some places it looked fine. Uh, in some places the 60 frames looked horrible. In some places it looked great. I don't know what that was about. I think I played 40% of it in 30 frames mode because it just looked way better. It was like distractingly bad kind of. It, it's Especially when you looked at big areas. And like how misty and gray it was. So it looked a little better when I switched it to the to 30 frames for a little bit, especially in towns. But then switching back to 60, it was, I mean, when I'm in the high combat, that feels the best, right? That feels way better. Uh, they they did a patch. I didn't notice it looking any better. I just play in performance mode because I've already beaten the game, so I don't care about like the best experience. But yeah, just wanted to point all that out for everyone. Be on the lookout, hopefully too. Reported on by IGN, Twitter user Spidey Ranger has an Earth images and gay pay footage of a can canceled Batman Nolan verse game. So, of course, Christopher Nolan's Batman universe of Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Apparently, there was going to be a game made by WB, I want to say Montreal. Was that right? I think that's right. I'll check in a second. And that was eventually canceled. It was going to have the Nemesis system. We heard all about this years ago, but now we actually can see footage of it. It looks pretty bad, gotta be honest. But of course, it was canceled and in early them. And it, you know, there could have been a plethora of reasons why it was canceled. I'm sure, but it was part of the reasons it didn't look great, even when like the game was being played or the actual game loop was being used. Uh, so and also the, there was another thing too. They had the Arkham series going at the time, which would have made zero sense to have two competing you know you're almost competing with yourself at that point making other batman you know you can inundate the market so they just canceled it and they made a shadow of mortar game that's uh, it was made from the guts of that they used the nemesis system from that that's where they utilized it there and then they went on you know everyone critical acclaim how cool the nemesis system was how ever, everyone loved it um and then wb went to never use it ever again in anything so thanks uh wb you made a great system uh they patented it and now no one no one can use it. No one will ever use it because WB can't even use it. They, so uh, WB, the biggest question mark in the entire industry. W what's going on with them? Why are they so bad at what they do? Moving on. You can, of course, see all this on Twitter if you'd like to see. I, I watched a bunch of them. It was fun, uh, but I have nothing really to add to the story. Yelper Games, a studio made of former industry veterans from Bioware's Dragon 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 Age team specifically the creator michael mick mike lee mike lee lad lad low lad lad laid low laid law laid law michael laid law and some ubisoft heads announced eternal strands and it moves some minds over the week it'll be available on ps5 xbox series and pc via steam so this is cool. I, I I looked into it. It looks fun with the little couple trailers. I think it's live on Steam right now. If you want to like wish list it or whatever, 
Uh, but I, I saw a lot of people. There's many articles about this team uh, being written right now. I just saw an IGN one that was posted a few days ago. Check it out if you'd like. I noticed it was getting some tractions in like the more hardcore circle, so I wanted to highlight it on the show, just in case everyone wants to go check it out. I will be waiting for more news. That you know, I'm, I'm not really like into the uh, you know jump on it when it's like uh, still early. I, I want to see when it comes and it has a date and you know all that. It's not really vaporware, right? Shift Up, the soul-based studio behind Stellar Blade, is hiring for another project that can be seen on their job listings. They have four criteria. This was found via Gamatsu. It labels um, the game will have a AAA urban science fiction action RPG. There will be a cross it will be a cross-platform game. It will be built on Unreal Engine. Monsters and creatures will appear. That was, of course, via Gamatsu. So not much there, but. Shift up already gearing up for another possible hit game. They have a giant hit on their hands with Stella Blade. We'll be talking about that a little bit later, but that game has gone mega viral, and I think that has given them quite a bit of attention. I'll be curious to see how much it say uh, it sells in about a month. I want to say it comes out May, right? I think it's May. Yeah, mid May, somewhere around there. Uh, very excited. I can't wait to play the game. It looks great. I'm not going to play the demo. I'm not a big demo guy anymore. I like playing the demo a little bit before the, the game comes out or maybe that same day. Uh, especially if the uh, contents transfer because it feels like, you know, you got the game a little early, right? You know, and then you can kind of play a little bit of it and then go straight into the game to re to kind of whet the appetite. I, li I like doing that. That's usually how I use demos, but I don't really need demos anymore because I, I can, I've, you know, I play game for so long. I know if I'm going to like a game or not, right? It's not like a mystery if I'm going to like a game. Uh, I, I know what I like. I know what I don't like. It's pretty easy to tell the difference and I don't mind spending money on the game and not loving the experience. Uh, I, I want to bring up Rise of Ronin. It's a game I'm on and off playing right now. Uh, it's a fine game. I, I know it's not a game I'm going to love by the end of the game. It looks like a fun thing to kind of mess around in and waste my time uh, in playing. But it's not this game that's going to move me. I'm not going to probably think about it in a month, you know. So it's just going to be a more casual experience, right? Instead of a, oh, you know, this has moved me. You know, it's not a it's not a rebirth game. It's just a, you know, for fun game I'm going to pick up and, and, and put down soon. Back to the dock it what if i push square dragon's topic 2 has sold 2.5 million copies in less than two weeks on the market according to capcom very impressive for uh a game that wasn't really big you know it, it it was in a very niche space in the first game i don't even know how much the first game sold my cats made it into frame right now and it's one of those things that you think about you're like oh okay yeah that, that makes sense for the sequel, but then you think about it, it's like, well, no, that's actually pretty impressive because it's not like they're working off of like a sequel that just came out. This game is pretty old. It launched late, like early 20, 2010s, something like that. And to see it come back out after all this time and still do relatively well is pretty impressive. I like that. I love seeing that. I think it found its market. I think it actually did what dragon saga one wanted to do now because it's very similar in the game they missed a lot i think uh in the uh from the first game right uh the 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 writing i, I think in narrative is horrible uh it's it's, it's pretty bad I, it's shocking honestly how, how bad it is but the combat is why you're playing the game right you don't really care too too much about the narrative i understand but that really holds it back from being a great game. But they still sold well, so I'm sure Capcom's happy with that. I imagine uh, it, it will have an okay tail, and then you will have a sale later and kind of boost it numbers. And then I'm sure they will have a re-release, just like they did with Dark Arisen. They did with the first game. They made a, a re-release called Dragon Soft and Dark Arisen. I'm sure they'll do the same thing with the second one, and they'll be able to kind of revitalize the sales then too. So they're going to be pretty, pretty good. Pretty good state for them. I, uh, I'm sure they're happy with their progress. According to True Trophy, Sea of Thieves will be launching with 254 trophies for the game. The base game in order to get the platinum will be 60. I thought I wanted to highlight this because I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. They're using the trophy in a cool way, right? So they're going to give you the base 
set of 60 from the base game and then you can get the rest of the trophies but you'll still get be it be a manageable manageable platinum you don't have to get like all the trophies of course this is a very common thing in many games but i wanted to highlight that make sure that they're actually taking the time to do it very curious to see how sea of thieves are going to be doing on playstation i reiterate that the xbox plan to test games on other platforms is strange it doesn't make any sense they will of course uh i'll tell you the result of the test right now the games will sell well if they're good games sea of thieves is a good game it's number one on the pre-order list i believe still after like many weeks um of being available to, uh, to pre-order i believe it still is and that is incredible for that game and yeah i i i don't know what they needed to learn uh i feel like that was just a veiled excuse to be like oh no it's it's just a test you know uh so now it's just to be like okay well what's the next four I assume this is going to be a slow burn of games slowly coming. Uh, and then maybe Bethesda will be allowed to release all their games on all platforms from now on. We'll see. Fallout 4 current gen upgrade will be coming to PS5 and Xbox Series SNX April 25th. Uh, very random. Uh, I believe this was delayed as well. Not Not my game, so this isn't something I'm like you know, been keeping up with, but I saw a little news story about it. So I wanted to cover it here. I'm sure it's a little, uh, uh, to coincide with the show. Cool. A little, a little late. This show might boost the sales of the game. I'll be curious to see. It so, because the game, it's not like last of us where like, Oh, you know, you can see the transfer. The, the game is a, is a pretty hardcore game. So will that really get people to play it now? That happened with Witcher 3, which I would argue is a much more hardcore of a game than Fallout 4 is. So I'm going to kind of eat my words on that, I bet. Uh, it, it will probably boost it a bit. I heard the show is very good already. A, a lot of people are loving the show. So I'll be checking it out maybe this weekend to see if I enjoy it. Enjoy it as well. Jason Stryer reported that Dead Space is on the ice again. This was a full report that you can go read over on Bloomberg. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover here. It's it's on ice again. They apparently wanted to try for a new game uh, after the success of, uh, or after this is supposed to success of Dead Space remake, but EA was not impressed by the sales numbers. So I went digging to see if I could find it, and they'd never posted uh, sales data past, past like 2 million copies. Uh, I think it was like 2 million copies in the first like week or so or something like that. Uh, so it sold relatively well for a horror game. But clearly not enough for EA to enjoy it. It was the second best-selling game for January. Um, and I don't remember, did it appear? You know, let me check if it appeared on the charts for uh, best-selling game for February. Because it was the second best right under Call of Duty. Which, that's just going to happen, right? Uh, that's just how the sales market goes to see. And then Dead Space was... Yeah, Dead Space was number two again. No, number three. So it was number three because Hogwarts Legacy came out on that month. So it was dropped to number three. Still selling relatively well. Now, of course, that's just sales. That's Circana sales data. So not giving us the full picture. And it's not like we know the numbers. But what did they expect? I don't I mean, what it Dead Space was never a, a giant seller. Um, So did they really think it was going to like explode or something? I don't know. They, I mean, the game looks amazing. So maybe they just, it just went way over budget or something, but I'm surprised they tried to go for a new game because dead space one kind of insinuates that there might be a difference in like the universes or something. If I remember right with like certain endings, uh, but that's done now. Uh, we'll, we'll never see another, uh, dead space remake again, which is pretty sad. I gotta say, um, I'll reiterate. I love dead space one. I think it's one of the best horror games ever made if not the best horror game ever made and that makes me sad that we're just gonna kind of move on now from dead space uh we're just gonna let that valuable ip just go away especially in the world of you know cross uh i'm, I'm blinking on the word um cross media right that's a perfect movie or show so you, it seems strange that they, they could have done a remake of two. They could have done a remake, a literal remake of three, because two is still a great game. I don't know. 
I remember people not loving two. I, I think they're nuts. I think two might be even better than one by a tiny bit. Eh, I don't know. One might be still might be better than two, but two is still a great game. Three is when it all went downhill, uh, of course, famously. But that that could have given them the opportunity to remake three. And I don't know. I think they're really making a blunder here. Of course, I can't see the books, obviously. But I think they really should have given this more time. I think they should have remade two and three and, and really have tried their best to kind of revitalize the series. It's. I don't know. When I think of EA, that's one of the, you know, that's like top five, of course. Ignoring in the sports games and all these things, that's top five. I'm like, what I think a valuable IP is, and they're just going to let it die. That's sad. Um, That's sad, and it shows me that they don't, um, they don't know what to, they're, they're, I don't know. I, to me, they're not steering the boat well, but I could be wrong. Um, EA Motive now is going back to, uh, to the uh, Iron Man game, as far, as far as I understand from that, from that report. Vampire Survivors is becoming the PS4 uh, and PS5 this summer. That's it. Uh, it's going to be having a, um, a Contra crossover as well. Uh, so that would be pretty hilarious to have guns in these things. I think there was an Among Us crossover as well in Vampire Survivor. Uh, so very funny. Enjoy that. I don't have much to add. I played Vampires a little bit. It was it was fun, but I don't. I didn't like get sucked into it like a lot of people did. I played a lot of it, but not not to the degree that a lot of us did, like my father and a lot of people I know. Now, of course, this is the part of the show where I ask, what have you been playing? Of course, this is a question to you at home. What have you been playing? You could, of course, let me know in the comments below. And you could tweet at me, at EVM9000. You let me know what you've been playing. We have a discussion. And we expound on it. Now, Destiny 2 Into the Light is what I've been spending the majority of my time on. I'm loving it. Uh, it kind of got all the people back into Destiny. I wasn't really playing it since... I mean, a very long time. I, I'm not not really playing it at all. But now with this new Into the Light, with them returning a lot of things, and then, of course, they showed off the Final Shape preview. That got me really excited. I'm back into the game. I'm enjoying it. You get to touch base with all your friends. You know, I have a clan on there that, that's semi-regular, and touching base with everyone is always nice, getting to uh, catch up with people and, and get to know them. It, it was really good. It was really good. I, I love... That's like one of the best parts, right? It's a really social part of the life. Like you get to know people and play with them and and have a good time. So I'm I'm very happy about that. Destiny two back in the in the fold. Uh, I haven't really been playing many games though. I've kind of relaxed on gaming a bit, doing other things. I did a f just because I felt like doing it. I did it for fun. Kingdom Hearts one speed run i do speed run very lightly not a serious speed run just a beat the game as fast as i could because there was three achievements i never got i never got the don't die achievement in kingdom hearts one i never got the don't change your equipment achievement and i never got beat the game in under 15 hours now none of that is hard if you play on easy mode because if you start on easy mode not only is it of course easier but the they give you starting enhancements that you can use on sora to boost them up and make it even easier so once you use all that uh f funny enough i actually forgot to use them so about halfway through the playthrough i um was having trouble with a boss um i died in quotes i closed the game and restarted it and of course that doesn't count as a death because you go back to your save point so i, I restarted from the save point Looked at my inventory because I was like, wait a minute, isn't there? And then, yeah, I had I had like strength ups and all these things. So I used all them. Then the game was fine after that. I never really had any issues uh, after that. I never died. Um, I don't think I died again after that. Uh, so it wasn't really very hard. I've, I, of course, used the uh, leveling uh, earlier thing. I got to like level 48, I think, when I beat the game. And it, it was pretty easy because, you know, in that game, if you remember... If you play Kingdom Hearts when you could just spam cure instead of in two and the, you know all the other games. You can't really just spam heal yourself unless you have items. But of course, items can run out. But you can spam cure over and over again, and it doesn't matter, right? Because uh, you have MP squares instead of a whole bar. So just using one little square to heal yourself is insanely broken. Uh, so if you, and of course, pair that with Leaf Bracer, making you immune when you use cure. Uh, makes it to where you're just sitting there hitting square eventually or hitting um, a eventually going to kill the thing you're hitting. Uh, and that was pretty much all I was doing using magic hitting, a, you know, hit, smacking them using Mushu when I could. 
Uh, and that was fun. I, I, I needed that. Uh, the, my life's been a little stressful uh, recently, and I needed kind of that familiarity. I guess I could say, and I'm and I'm I'm enjoying that that little bit again. So that was fun. I got to do that. Blaze through the game. I think I beat it in. I can't remember if it was in seven or eight hours. I want to say it was seven hours ish, seven forty five, somewhere around there. So like in half the time, it's ve- it's a very easy achievement. Do not be scared. Um, I ended up skipping Olympus and um. Olympus Coliseum and Atlantica. Uh, so that's two whole worlds I didn't ha- even have to do to beat the game, uh, which was very nice. I could just I just ignored them completely because you don't really need it. Uh, of course, you don't get things from that world, but that's OK. I couldn't change my equipment anyway, so it's not like I cared about the Keyblades. I really cared about the magic, but I had enough magic to 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 beat the game. with, So it was fine. Honestly, the hardest part was the room before the final boss. Because it's like just an endless wave after wave of Heartless. So it was so annoying because like Donald and Goofy would die so soon. I'm sitting there just like trying to catch the the little. um, I don't remember what they're called, but the like the mini giant Heartless guy with the sword that like he can hit the ground with the sword and turn into fire and like and go around you. So you really can't hit them. It's so it's so annoying. So, so annoying. I'm back. Let's wrap up. What have you been playing now? <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts 1, of course, finishing that speed run and then going back to Destiny 2 has been real nice. So first off, Destiny 2, of course, has the Into the Light expansion. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much like a horde mode. If you ever played Gears War, what was that, 2, I think is where it debuted on? It's pretty much that, but very bare bones, right? You you only have really three things you can buy. You can buy like little trip mine grenades, you can buy a turret, and you can buy a decoy. Base mode, I think, is actually great for returning players from long ago and newer players because it's pretty easy and it's pretty light on difficulty once you go past wave 30 you might have some issues but going up to that is fine and then they have a separate playlist one where you only have to do 10 waves very very quick we're we're talking like 10 minutes and you're out right i'll say like pretty much it's 10 minutes every every 10 waves Uh, they call it a set so you do every set is pretty much like 10 minutes. So, you know, you're doing one in about an hour. Now, last night I did the legend mode, which is pretty much the hardest version of that. Doesn't really get too hard if you're a very veteran of the game until you get to the very end. So it, once you're hitting around 35 to 50, that's when things start getting a little spicy, especially around 40. Uh, when you get the tormentors and these things, that's when get, the game starts getting a bit spicy. A lot of things start spawning. It gets a little hectic. But I had uh, me, including the two other people, very, very experienced at the game. So it wasn't really that crazy for us. But there were times where it got hectic. There were definitely times where like we all died. One person had to like rotate around the room to not die in the final boss room. Because that final boss is a little tanky and... There's a lot of enemies in that boss room. So you'll you'll wipe out a, a, a wave and then you'll have to fight. You know, you fight the final boss a little bit. Then another wave spawns. You pretty much just rinse, repeat that. Clear out the wave. Boom, boom, boom. I was using um, like a punch build for Titans and I have to rev up to to be able to really do damage. And that's it's so hard in that arena because they, they they made they are the ai pretty smart i gotta be honest in that in that room you can definitely tell when the ai is smarter and and dumber in some areas there's some raids that have kind of dumb ai but in this in that final wave like if you go from behind them and one of them sees you they all turn around and kill you so that was it was really fun that was really fun to have a good challenge in the game that was really fun i can't wait to do more of those because it's much more rewarding too. you get double the rewards and then at the end you get three chests in total so it's really nice but I'm done spam- spewing about this. Let's get into Rumor Roundup. Reported on by VGC during an episode of the Kind of Funny's x cast co-host Paris Lilly made a prediction about seeing Gears 6 soon and it being teased for their next-gen series of Xbox consoles. This is quoting directly from the article, but also quoting, of course, Paris Lilly directly. Quote, when they showed the Marvel 1943 trailer in Unreal Engine 5 during the GDC, I jokingly tweeted, enter quote, imagine what Gears 6 would look like in Unreal 5, and end quote. Lily said, because it looked so good. 
Jeff Grubb was on this episode and greed with the prediction stating, quote, I will say I've heard some stuff might be happening with Gear 6 this summer, so I think that tease sounds about right to me. Paris, that seems like what we can expect, end quote. So he goes on to make a prediction, but then, of course, we see Jeff Grubb known leaker slash guy who just talks, right? Now, and I don't mean that as a negative. I mean that as he'll say things and he means them. Like when he says, yeah, I've heard that being talked about. He means that he heard a few people was talking about it. He's being, I think Jeff Grubb is very literal with the words he uses, especially when he's talking about things that he's hearing. Because he's very, uh, he's very open with what he hears. So it's not always right. right. But that's not a bad thing, right? I don't, when you make a big leak, I you know, that that is something. But when you're just having conversations, Jeff Grubb does his, I think, a daily show on, I think it's Giant Bomb. So, he, you know, he's very open with what he hears. But that doesn't mean it's gospel every time. But, you know, when he makes a declaration, that's a big deal. Now, this is, I would say, not necessarily, you know, something in the middle. It's not really a declaration, but he's saying, like, yeah, I'm hearing that. That sounds about right. Well, what you can expect, right? But I don't think that's something to write home to guarantee 100%, no doubt about it, Gear 6, you know, coming very soon. If we remember back in early last year, I want to say, where the rumors that Gears could be coming soon-ish because Coalition was um, originally making a new IP that got canceled, I want to say, two years in development. So they canceled that, moved all their operations just straight to Gear 6, though they had just started making the game two years ago a year ago something like that if that report's correct it's somewhere around there i could be getting my years off that maybe 2022 2021 roughly around that time so i think it's about time they could probably show the game and uh, drive up hype and then release date if not late next year could be the year after that depends on how deep the game is and also if you played gears 5 how are they gonna make a gear 6 that's that's the big question you get the the I won't spoil it, but something pretty big happens at the end of five. And it's something that they haven't had to deal with in the Gears franchise before. So how do they move forward with it? I don't know. Uh, and and a, lot of, a lot of interesting choices were made at the end of Gears 5. So we'll see how that works into a sixth game. Because I'm assuming one thing will have to happen. And I, and I, and I highly doubt anyone will even care about that because i never really heard that many people say they even played gears 5 story but maybe i'm wrong hollow knight silk song has been classified in south korea and was available to wishlist on the xbox store and there was a retweet from sarah bond retweeting that very statement uh, saying it was available to wishlist uh saying you know reminders just keep it coming day one of game pass so it's coming soon reclassified on um being classified in south korea you know that means it's being like raided and all these things so expect it soon it's about time these guys announced this four five years ago something like that 2019 ish 2010 or sorry 2020 somewhere around there uh, i'm sure uh, something happened that completely fell apart mid-development i'd be curious to see what it is did they have to restart something did a certain section of the game just couldn't come through so they had to abandon a part of the game and remake it with their internal struggles. I don't know. We had that vague tweet, I want to say, last year. That was stating that we had problems with development. There were issues. And they said that they pretty much had to delay the game. But they, you know, what does that mean? It was very vague. So we don't know exactly what happened with the title. So we're, I guess we're just waiting to see now. It's very soon. Again, I i'm sure it will be at the june showcase that we know will happen i, I want to say it was june 7th or 9th somewhere around there for xbox gearing up to be a pretty big one might be another showcase where they'll be slowly announcing more games coming to other platforms reminder uh it's and very soon all the games will be out for the x those, those four games very very interesting time to live in speak with ign in interview saber interactive ceo matthew Arch confirmed that the company took Kotar remake with them during the split and said development is still ongoing quote it's clear and it's obvious that we're working on this he said quote it's 
been in the press numerous times. What I will say is the game is alive and well, and we're dedicated to make sure we exceed customers, consumers' expectations, end quote. Cool, I guess. Do we really think this is going to be in a good spot? I'm curious if they have to remake this to Aspire. Let's remind, let's remind ourselves Aspire was working on the remake. Completely, completely botched it, I'm sure. Uh, the, the, it sounds like, uh, I think there was a rumor that PlayStation's out does not want to be affiliated with the remake anymore. It is uh, apparently in a complete mess. I'm surprised that they wanted to be. <laughs> I mean, just looking at one, just looking at that structure of how Embracer and all these things were working, I'm surprised PlayStation wanted to touch that. It, it just seemed like a house of cards, and they fiddled with the cards, and, and they went with it. I'm, I, I'm glad if that is true. I think it would be very wise to pull all involvement with this and just let them figure it out because i can't imagine this remake is going to be in a good spot right now or when it comes out there's already small things about how there wasn't dlc and like the switch switch thing didn't have like it wasn't like going to be a complete remake and all these there was a bunch of messy things and now on top of all that the the projects getting messed up in between uh these companies leaving embracer and and how messy this process has all been We'll, we'll see when the game comes out when that will be is going to be a great question. Silk Knight, a known leaker who I've actually cited on the show before, has put out more rumors um, at this time, and uh, they're being disputed by Jason Schreier. Now, this is a tale of this time, right? It's, uh, a, t- a, a leaker will, will bring something out, right? I'll, I'll take you on a little story. This happens a lot. It's something I've noticed in the show, actually. A leaker will get a little, will make like a Twitter account or something, name themselves something cool, make a profile picture, make them identifiable, and then they'll get something right. They'll get one thing right because they probably heard from something or they're probably you know involved in something, and then that leaker then po- then goes crazy, and then and then like says some wild thing. The famous one is, oh, I heard Bloodborne remake. You know they 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 you know they got a taste of the the press, the attention, and they want more of it frankly. Uh, and I think this is a situation that if you want to read the leaks, go ahead. I actually am with Jason Schreier on this one. Uh, he's someone that does not, you know, just randomly go after people, especially leakers. Like he doesn't just like highlight a leaker and j- just a shit on them all the time. So uh, him specifically quoting them, he did a screen grab. He loves doing these screen. I don't know why he just doesn't quote them. He just screen grabs a couple things and put posts about it. But he said like the, the you know, the, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, this is nonsense. And I agree. I, I think this is just one of those situations where Leaker got something right because of X, Y, Z. Maybe he's working there. Maybe he knows someone's working there. Got to taste of the pan. And, he, you know, he starts saying random things to try and get attention. Who cares? Let's move on. Not much for the start of the show for the week. Because all we really have to discuss is... Uh, Beginning on July 29th, 2024, we will no longer, this is Microsoft, we will no longer support the Xbox 360 store or the Xbox 360 marketplace. Until this date, purchases made in the Xbox 360 store and the Xbox 360 marketplace will continue to be supported. This will not impact how the community plays currently owned games on Xbox 360 or video backwards compatibility. Players will be able to continue to download and play games they already own on Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Xbox Series S and X consoles via backwards compatibility. So that is your warning. I never like few month warnings, though, especially with a store. I think the cleanest way to do it, you announce a year ahead and you stick to the date. I don't like, oh, by the way, in three months, we're closing the store forever. It's never sit right with me, but here we are. We are sunsetting the Xbox 360 store, Microsoft says, and this is your chance. Go buy the games you want to play. Of course, this does not affect backwards compatibility. So if the game is backwards compatible, You'll still be able to download and all these things. You just won't be able to go to the store that's attached to the Xbox One or, or sorry, Xbox Series store and buy them, right? You'll have to have bought them prior to this. So make sure if there's a game out there you want to get, get it now before July 29th because you will no longer be able to get them unless you buy them physically, of course. Unless you buy them physically. I don't really have much to add to this. It's one of those things that... It's just kind of the nature of the beast. I wish we could kind of figure out a way to keep these things in perpetuity, especially since backwards compatibility seems to be such an initiative. And they actually coupled this with 
to clearly hide the story, by the way. Uh, Cerebon is forming a team that will make sure everything is forwards compatible and, and like they're going to like game preservation, all these things. I, I'll believe whatever that is when I see it. That just, you know, it sounds like just nonsense. Maybe that's a team that's going to make sure that that there's some sort of coding through line from here on out that makes sense for the future or something. I'm not sure. But um, I think the next big thing will will be to ensure that there is some sort of permanent state of existence for these stores. I don't know how you would figure that out, but I think Microsoft is actually in a good place on their marketplace to actually figure that out, right? I think that's the leading person. Something like Steam, right? Steam isn't just randomly delisting games from the store, right? So I think there's something there that they need to figure out. How do we keep these games ever from getting on the store? Maybe that's something that's in their current contracts now that says, hey, you know, there is no store closing now. You're available when you are able to sell. You're available to sell forever uh, until X Y Z happens. Maybe that's already a thing in their current agreements with how these games hit the stores. But I think that's the next thing. We we should, uh, hopefully we are done closing stores. Hopefully there will not be an Xbox One store closure, or if there was, all the games have made their departure from that store to whatever the new version of that store would be. I think consoles are due for a permanent platform. I think we have finally caught up with Steam in quotes or PC that when you buy a game, that's you have that game now. And that is and then if you want to resell it, you can. But when you buy a game that is there forever, if you want to buy a game 20 from 20 years ago, you can just go over there. You buy it. We'll see. According to Spush Square Entertainment Analyst Firm Amper. I was looking at player tracking data for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and it said that it may have sold around 2 million copies, so we haven't had sales data as of recording for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, this is strange for multiple reasons. One, Square Enix loves bragging. Every company does, right? Especially publicly owned companies. And we have not heard anything, which is a little disheartening. Why haven't we heard some concrete information? Hey, it sold XYZ. It sold this much hey it exceeded your expectations now if we remember square enix famously has high expectations for their games now that was something i noticed that was always prevalent in their western marketplace or at least their western studios that no longer exist now will that be put on to final fantasy 7 because that of course is their baby that is their you know shining north star right these are not the same thing when you compare them to each other's so i'm trying i'm not comparing i know i'm semi comparing apples to origins but when we think about it selling too many copies is pretty sad right for such a big game like that uh i imagine their internals said something better i'm curious if that is true this is of course uh i think this is tracked with a multiple things like player data and publicly available things so this is not gospel i will say that for sure but it is something to point out. It, it did put in my mind, I was like, eh, they haven't announced sales data yet. Hmm. Strange. Strange. Now, the the ship is on route, uh, on route right? They're they're making the, this tr a trilogy. So there's nothing stopping this. But I think it was important to point out. That's the show for the week date updates. Now, of course, we go over Game Pass every week when they go up. We do the same thing for the uh, PlayStation Plus when they go live as well. Which I think actually I missed. I might have to grab that after this. I'll double check. Uh, so this is already live as of recording April, uh, on April 3rd. This was Lego 2K Drive. Next up, Lit Gator Game. What? Oh my god. I have to read this. Who wouldn't want an adorable little gator embark on a cute little quest discovering new friends and covering everything its island has to offer? Climb, swim, glide, and slide your way into the hearts of many different characters you meet along the way. In this adorable open world adventure. There you go, little gator game. ESports Sports PGA Tour. This is, of course, Cloud PC Series S X EA Play. Available now. Kona, an, uh, Cloud and Console. That's already live. Bot, 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 botany. Botany Manor. Cloud PC and Xbox Series S and X. That's available day one in Game Pass. Looks like you're... Oh, my God. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Cloud Console PC. That is live as of recording. Harold Halibut, Cloud PC and Xbox Series S and X. That's April 16th. That's available day one in Game Pass game. 
this looks the, the picture that they used looks very strange it's like this gentleman looking at a green circle with this fish man maybe it looks like an alien i don't know very strange moving on everything leaving april 15th so as of recording you have uh, or as you're seeing this you have three days to, to claim or play these or make sure you get your 20 percent off purchase if you want to buy them amnesia collection cloud console and pc amnesia rebirth cloud console and pc back for blood cloud console and pc phantom abyss cloud console and pc research and destroy cloud console and pc and soma cloud console and pc that is everything leaving april 15th if you'd like to keep them in your library make sure you snag the 20 percent off per, uh sale while they're on game pass Next up, Ghost Runner will be free to claim on Epic Games Store April 11th through the 18th. Ubisoft Forward has been announced for June t- June 10th. Get ready for that. X Defiant has been delayed yet again and is set to be released in March. This game is clearly in some sort of torture internally. Um, as far as I understand, producers are trying to in, like continually implement Call of Duty modes or something about that nature. Uh, and it's just never... Re- it's I don't know. It's a mess. Horrible name. I've said enough about that game star wars outlaws august 30th got a date was leaked accidentally um i want to say it was like the japan site for ubisoft or something like that um released the date accidentally very funny and then that is date update we have what's cute for the week and of course it could be a game a video game a tv show movie music podcast anything really what do you have queued up for the weekend of course this is a question for myself but of course i'm asking you at home let me know in the comments below tweet at me at unit 1000 let me know what do you have queued up for the weekend now i am going to be head deep in more destiny 2 i'm again loving the game and enjoying playing with everyone again catching up with all my friends having a blast just re- reliving uh these new weapons getting to bring in those old weapons that we loved with new perks and all these things be going into that getting ready for april 30th because they're gonna have like this raid challenge it's gonna be a lot of fun aside from that though no real plans this weekend like i said i might be trying that fallout show i might be digging into that but aside from that it's gonna be all clear on the front over here don't think there's gonna be too too much else to add other than a little bit of destiny here and there maybe a little bit more rise of the run again it didn't really grab me wasn't really super into it but i might give it another shot because it is fun i do like uh the combat so you know a little fun with the dance uh the stances and all these things so i i need to give it a little more time see if i jive it but that's the show thank you so much for tuning in this weekend uh, again light news week expect regular updates throughout the week from the show of course with the clips and all these things and uh expect some experimentations in the form of new videos get excited i I won't spoil what they are but i think they're gonna be very good until the next time go chief